to function pretty well then. But as you get older, you get a little bit more length, so it gets up a little bit higher. I don't know if, th if that gives you a mechanical advantage or not. So, the, the one doctor that just did it, Dr. Gerardo or something like yes, that, that yeah. you talked to in Rochester, yeah. um, they said that um, they used allograft, this cadaver tissue, to, to connect from as far up as it could go up higher into the, the ribs. That's what um, Gretchen, the mom, told me. Yeah. And I, that was the first I've heard of something like that. Yeah, it would not be my choice to do that. Okay. I'd go right to the, I'm an all natural kind of person. Okay. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's better to attach it to the fascia. I, it, that may be a good idea. So that's what, <coughs> you attach it to the fascia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, so let me see. I think that's. Uh, Oh, so in conclusion, I think you know the dynamic abdominal plasty where muscles move versus a static one offers advantages over this what's been the standard that doctors have been doing around the country in that it's really likely there's improved function. And I think you get a better long-term uh, aesthetic result or appearance because muscles always have a little bit of tone in them. When we do surgery and patients are dead out to sleep, you can't wake them up, they don't feel any pain, their muscles still have tone in them. Unless the anesthesiologist gives a special medication that blocks the muscles, then they, they will go soft, but they always have tone in them. And I think that constant tone prevents the, the re-stretching out of the abdomen, which is going to occur if you just have fascia and skin without any muscle in it. Um, because you know, all our bodies start obeying the laws of gravity. As we get older, we lose these little elastin fibers. That's what keeps so many plastic surgeons in business when the skin of your face kind of sacks a little bit mm -hmm. off and stuff like that. Um, so I think it has the potentials for doing this. Um, yeah, that was my last slide. So um, <laughs> uh, does anyone have any uh, questions? Are about this? <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> I got a, a couple questions. Yeah. I don't take any ribs out. I mean, I think that um, when uh, you have other muscles that may take over for the, the muscles in the ribs, perhaps that makes it better. Um, from a urology standpoint also, like with him, he has dilated everything. You know, okay. the retro bladder, uh -huh. the hypernecosis. They did a vesicostomy through his penis, which I've heard is uncommon and nobody else has had before. Yes. So that's what I'm kind of wondering. When we're doing the surgery, is it urology also consulted to kind of Yes, I want, um, patients come to me, I, I, I recommend they see a urologist at the same time, because I don't, if it's my son or, or daughter, um, I, I don't want lots of operations from my child. So my feeling is in general, when a child goes to sleep, anything you can do, come in and do then, and then leave my child alone. And so I think it's a good idea to do that because I don't think, uh, I think a lot of doctors tend to just look in their own world and forget about everybody else. And as a result, a lot of kids end up getting more operations than they might have to have. So there hasn't been any problems with making the abdomen smaller in stasis of the evening? No, that has not been a problem. Um, I think most, I've had a, heard a couple of parents say their kids get fewer urinary tract infections. They think. But again, that's a parental observation, so I'm not sure about it. And really, what we should be doing is urodynamics, which is studying the urinary tract before and after to have hard data. That's what needs to be done. And then with this, since the muscle is still, it's still connected to the hip, correct? You don't disconnect it from the hip area? Is that where the top portion is connected? That and the upper, upper leg. So there's no problems with the hips? Well, I don't know the answer to that because um, the first patient I did is um, was in 1995, and so could there be problems in you know 70 years from now? Maybe, but you could you could also ask the question: What is the um, effect on the lower back and hips if you don't have abdominal muscles to counterbalance the back over a long period of time? You know, might you get problems from that? You know, it's, but it's a good question. I don't know which is worse because I, I don't have enough experience. And then just the last one I have with um, infection. Has there been any problems with infection? Not 
yeah, I should find some wood. But <laughs> I, mean, it, I think that it's a clean operation, so the infection rate should be 2.5%. So there should be about a 97% chance that you wouldn't get an infection, and about 2.5% you might. Yeah, infection is really, it's hard. not only is it hard for the family, it's hard for the doctor to have to readmit someone and, and take care of it, but that's, um, it's something you always get over. It's just, it makes your recovery just painfully long. I have a question. Um, you said you, there was a couple that you didn't actually do this because they had some muscle tissue. Um, and my son does have some muscle tissue, so I've always thought he probably wasn't going to be a candidate for it. But you're saying that maybe that might be advantage to do it anyway. Yeah, there might. I, you know, I don't know. It's a, it's a, a bigger those, muscle, and it works pretty well. But. Yeah, because we have a lot of those issues of constipation, poor cough, respiratory issues. Um, the, the other thing I didn't talk about is what are you giving up by doing this operation in terms of weakness of the upper leg? And that's something I don't know about. There are three big muscles there. And we know from take, it, this has been studied in another place in the body, up in the shoulder, there's a really big muscle in your back that we use a lot as plastic surgeons. Well, um, I don't anymore, but I used to. And um, it's a huge muscle. And so someone did a study to see what were the side effects or how, what was the weakness like afterwards? And they studied patients that had it done and all the patients reported they had no weakness afterwards. But when they actually measured before and after, they saw that it was actually a little bit weaker, but it wasn't enough that the patient knew about it. Now, I suspect, just knowing how muscles work, that the other two probably get much bigger and, and take over for the majority of it. There's, there's a, a space where you take that center muscle out, and I've been sewing the two together just so that it'd be, you know, just covering in the midline. Um, but there may be, that, that could be a potential downside, I suppose, but you get so much function here that I think. And that would help um, with the possibility of scoliosis and all of that as time goes on? You, you think it might. Um, uh, it's, you know, scoliosis, I think, and I don't do this surgery, but I think it's more to the side, and so yeah. I don't think that would affect that, but kyphosis, where the, the bend goes this way, I think it, it would be more yeah, so likely to have an effect. Which is the, the lordosis, lordosis, yeah. Bed. But he's, he's now beginning to develop a little bit of a scoliosis, scoliosis. as well. Yeah. He's 11. Yeah, and uh, it's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I think, you know, the great thing about this operation is um, my, my practice is entirely treating birth defects. That's all I do. I don't do cosmetic surgery or anything else. And there are a lot of operations that I do that are, are pretty challenging, and I think we do better than anywhere else. The great thing about this operation is it's, it's a pretty straightforward operation. I don't think you have to necessarily come to Dallas to have it done. I mean, I'm always happy to take care of anybody. But um, I think it's the kind of thing, you know, I spoke to, when, you know, when John called me in um, upstate New York, I, you know, I just told him about my experience on the phone and my guess is that kid's going to do it. He did really, really well. Yeah. Five days post-op home and playing and up and down yeah. with his legs and it's doing yeah. really well. Yeah, yeah, kids bounce back pretty quick. And there was one in Milwaukee that was done. Dr. Sanger did one. And um, the, the thing with that one is that they, he decided to pass on his legs. He was 